to the book of Exodus at chapter number 32. Exodus at chapter 32. Commencing in verse number 7 through verse 14. And I want to read to you from the English Standard Version of the Bible, and here are these words. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down for your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way that I commanded them. They've made for themselves a golden calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, in order that I may make a great nation of you. But Moses implored the Lord and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent did he bring them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth Turn from your burning anger and relent from this disaster against your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self and said to them, I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and all this land that I have promised I will give to your offspring and they shall inherit it forever. Verse 14 reads, And the Lord relented from the disaster that he had spoken of bringing on his people. Thank you. You may be seated. The King James says, God repented. Well, that word repent to me has a sin connotation. And there is no sin in God's character. There is no corruptibility in the character of God. God relented. God changed his mind. Because Moses interceded. I want to talk this morning from this subject. It happens after prayer. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you're up against. If you want to come out of it, it can only happen after prayer. I wish I had a witness here who really knows that the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. Prayer can bring your child back home. Prayer can heal your body. Prayer can rid you of your addiction. Prayer can settle you down when your enemies are trying to come up against you. Prayer can heal the sick. Prayer can raise the dead. Somebody ought to help me testify here. I am a living testimony that prayer still works. The old folk at my home used to say, if you pray and pray right, somebody who was raised like I was raised, know that God will hear and answer prayer. 
It happens. It can only happen after prayer. Ruth Bell Graham, the late wife of the famed evangelist Billy Graham, says, pray when you feel like it, for it is a sin to neglect such an opportunity. And she goes on to say, pray when you don't feel like it, for it is dangerous to remain in that condition. Hear that one more time. Pray when you feel like it, Ruth Bell Graham says. Pray when you feel like it, for it is a sin to neglect such an opportunity. And then pray when you don't feel like it, for it is dangerous to remain in that condition. Charles Spurgeon. The eminent and famed preacher of an era gone by of the Metropolitan Tabernacle London says, prayer is the slender nerve that moves the arm of omnipotence. Prayer is the slender nerve that moves the arm of omnipotence. Dr. H.B. Charles of the Shallow Metropolitan Church in Jacksonville, Florida, says there is a lot you can do to fix your situation after you pray. But there's nothing you can do to fix it until you pray. I know what prayer can do. I said I know what prayer can do. I've seen God move mountains in my own situation because I had the good sense to get on my knees and say to him, God, I can't, but you can. You can make an enemy a friend. You can make my body whole again. You can provide what I need because the record says you're Jehovah Jireh. I wish I had a witness here. You can give me peace in my midnight hour because the record says you're Jehovah Shalom. You can open red seas. You can shut the mouths of lions. You can deliver in a lion's den. You can deliver in a fiery furnace. You know how to show up in a Philippian jail. You know how to get somebody who is dead to come back to life again. All power is in your hand. And if I pray and pray right, you will hear and answer prayer. Uh, walk with me around the text. God has delivered the children of Israel with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. And he just got through telling Moses, we will follow God. We will do whatever he commands. We will go with him wherever he leads. He brought us out of Egypt. They, they, they just promised that they would follow God's command. And then Moses leaves them temporarily to go up to Mount Sinai to get the laws from God. And Moses is delayed. I want, you to, I want you to feel this with me. Where would you rather be? In the mountain, face to face with God, or downstairs with some stubborn, stiff neck, ugly acting, good for nothing, ungrateful,
grateful people. I don't blame Moses because I would much rather be in the presence of God. Can, can you imagine what goes on in the face of God? Can you imagine God rolling back his glory and allowing Moses to talk with him face to face? Who would want to leave that to come meet some ungrateful people? Somebody ought to help me preach at this moment. Oh, brothers and sisters, I wish I could stay in church all day Sunday and all day Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. But I come to church to get what I need to deal with what I got to deal with on Monday morning. I, I wish I could stay here all day, but I come here to get refueled. Now, I don't know what church does for you, but let me tell you what worship does for me. It re-energizes me. Being in God's house and being with God's people gives me more energy to do what I have to do to please God with people who don't appreciate it. I, I wouldn't do what I do if it was for the people. Like Moses, I do what I do because God called me. Somebody ought to help me preach. And when God calls you to love a people, it don't mean that they're going to love you. God did not send me to Lily Grove for you to love me. He sent me here for me to love you. And if I love you and please God, he'll take care of my need. My God shall supply. I wish I had a Bible reader. All your need. According to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Moses is in the presence of God getting laws and instruction for the life of that generation of people. When without provocation, without notice, they walk up to Aaron Moses' brother and says to him, make us a golden calf. Make us a God that we can see. Because this Moses who just led him, who just brought him out, this Moses, we, we don't know what's happened to him. We don't know where he is. So, so make us a, a God that we can see. <laughs> and poor, stupid Aaron. Be because that's, that's, that's what it is. It's stupidity at its best. Poor Aaron says, all right, bring me your gold earrings, bring me your bracelets and your jewelry, and I'll make you a God you can see. And they make this God out of gold and set it up before the people, and Aaron, Moses' brother, says, here is your God. And the people say, he brought us out of it. Not God, he brought us. This golden calf, this idol God. And brothers and sisters, you hear me. Idolatry is not worshiping primarily a false God. It's worshiping the true God in a false manner. 
You can be in Lily Grove this morning and make anything an idol. You can idolize marriage over God. Talk back to me if you can. You can idolize a man or a woman over God. You can idolize your house, your car, your career, your education. Anything that you give all your attention towards, that's your idol. They build this idol God. And the Bible says, they sat down to eat and drink. Re read it when you get home. It's right in the text. And they rose up to play. And God saw them. And then we pick up the story in verse 7. Where God says, Moses, just like I sent you down to Egypt, I need you to go down this mountain because your people have corrupted themselves. They built an idol and they are dancing around it and they are saying to an idol who can't hear them, you brought us out of the land of Egypt. Go down there because I'm looking at them and they are a stiff necked people and I am going to kill every one of them. Leave me alone, Moses. Don't, don't ask me to do nothing for them. I'm sick of them. I'm tired of them. I'm going to kill them all. Moses, let me alone. Read it. It's right here in the text. But before I get to Moses' intercession, I need to drop this on you. I'm not going to charge you this. I'm just going to give you this for free. There is something God puts in Moses that's absent in Aaron. There's something God puts in his designated leader that he doesn't give anybody else in the entire congregation. And that's God's authority. And listen, when you don't have God's authority, you do crazy stuff like make an idol. You do crazy stuff like let people do what they want to do. Somebody ought to help me preach it. As the shepherd of this flock, as the pastor of this church, God has given me what he's not given anybody else so I can't let you do what you want to do. Because Aaron sticks his finger in the air and see which way the wind is blowing and say, I better get in front of that so I can look like the leader. One who is pseudo in leadership just runs ahead of the crowd and tries to see which way the wind is blowing so he can be popular with the people. But the called preacher, the called leader, the called pastor can't worry about a popularity contest. Because sheep don't know what they need. That's why they need a shepherd. Somebody ought to help me talk here. And God chooses to lead through one shepherd at a time. And this shepherd is Moses. And in his absence, Aaron acts stupidly. By allowing the people to do what they want. And when God saw it, he said, I got enough. I done brought them out of Egypt. I fed them when they were hungry. When they got thirsty, I, I gave them water, sweet water out of a rock. 
that their clothes have not worn out. I've kept snakes and scorpions away from them. I was a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. When the Egyptians tried to get them, I crossed them through the Red Sea. I let them go over on dry ground. Pharaoh tried to come behind them. I let Pharaoh get in the middle of the sea. I unscrewed the boats from his chariots. The chariots broke down in the middle of the sea. And when Pharaoh tried to get where they were, I let the waters that opened for them close on Pharaoh and drowned all of the Egyptians they got on the other side and Miriam took out a tambourine and said God is a man of war he's never lost a battle and Jehovah is his name all I've done for them and they're going to put an idol in my face and God is saying to some worshiper here in Lily Grove this morning. All I've done for you. All the ways I've made for you. All the tears I've dried for you. All the provisions I have kept for you. All the blessings I sent your way. How dare you sit in my face and don't tell me thank you. How ungrateful can you be? God woke you up this morning. God put food on your table. You got a job, not because you're so smart. It's folks smarter than you on the streets this morning. God said, get down there. And go deal with that. Because I, I made up my mind. I'm going to get rid of all of them. I'm going to start all over. That's what the text says. I will make a nation from you. But before he gives Moses that promise, he says, Moses, I know what you're going to ask. Leave me alone. Now, brothers and sisters, that, that makes me want to shout. Because God wants to save them. He loves them. He brought them out. But they've angered him. They've made him so angry that he's sick of them. But he wants to save them. So what God is really saying is, Moses, I'm going to act right if you ask me. It's my will already. I just want you to ask me. And, and that's what prayer is all about. It's God's will already. He just wants you to ask. If you pray and pray right, he already wants to do it. He just wants you to ask him. Uh, here is how to get every one of your prayers answered. I got a formula right here. To give you that will bless you for the rest of your life to get every prayer you pray answered. Moses gives us a formula right here in the text. First of all, he appeals to God's fatherly affection. It's right here in verse number 11. He says, Oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people? who you brought out of the land of Egypt. Moses is praying based on God's love. He is praying based on God's electing grace. 
He's praying on behalf of God's exhaustive sovereignty. He's praying on behalf of God's graceful redemption. You just told me, God, that that's your people. But they ain't my people. They're your people. Because you said, I brought them out of Egypt. You can't go back on your own word. Somebody ought to help me preach it. What Moses is doing, and here's what you and I ought to do if we want to get our prayers answered. Put God's words back in his mouth. I know I messed up. But you said, if I confess my sin, you said, Knock and the door shall be open. You said if I walk uprightly, that's no good thing you will withhold from me. You said, cast my cares on you. That's, that's putting God's words back in his mouth. That's God's electing grace. You brought him out. And since you brought him out, you got to keep him by your love. You know you love him. You know you love him. That's why you want me to ask you. Because you know you're going to do it anyway. You just need me to ask you. Well, all right, Father. Please don't do what you just got through saying. And brothers and sisters, I, I need somebody to hold me because I've been to run right now. Here is how powerful prayer is. God right this morning is answering the prayers of people who are dead. Your mama prayed for you and she is in her grave and God is answering her prayer. Your grandmother prayed for you and she's in her grave and God got a roof over your head. some hospital because my mother got down on her knee I say Lord if I'm not around take care of my children my daddy got on his knee and called every one of us by name and said, if you see my children going in a way that I didn't raise them, catch them by the reins of their mind and turn them around before it's everlasting too late. And my mom and dad and my grandmother sleeping in that grave. And God is still answering their prayer. I need somebody else here who know what prayer can do. Prayer of people who are gone can stop you in your tracks. And you remember that somebody had you on their mind. And somebody would not like for you to be doing the stuff that you're doing right now. And you always turn around. Because God is still hearing prayers. People prayed for you who are dead and in their grave. 
I mean it when I say it. I mean it when I sing it. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. I need the Lord to help me with my daughter. I need the Lord to help me with my granddaughter. I say, Lord, I know she's doing some things in New Orleans she ain't got no business doing. But you in New Orleans just like you here in Houston. Put your hands on her. Protect her. Keep her while she's crazy. While she's acting a fool. While she's wild and doing stuff she got no business. Keep your hands on her just like you kept your hands on me. And somebody here who used to smoke dope. Somebody here who used to get drunk all Saturday night. You in church right now because somebody prayed for you. And then he says, Father, don't do that. Don't kill them. Because you've made too much of an investment in them. You, you didn't put too much in them to kill them in the wilderness. Please don't do that. Because if you do that, the Egyptians, your sworn enemies, will mock you and laugh at you and say, you brought them out, but you can't keep them. God, don't do that. Here it is. Your public reputation is on the line. You want God to answer your prayer? Bring up his reputation. And remind him of what he did for the children of Israel. What he did for the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. What he did for Daniel in the lion's den. And when you bring up God's reputation, he's got to stand by his reputation. He cannot dishonor his reputation. And then Moses finally pulls out his trump card. You know, every successful prayer got a secret weapon. Every successful prayer got one last card up on his or her sleeve. God, if you ain't going to do it for this reason, and God, if you ain't going to do it for that reason, and God, if you ain't going to do it for that reason, you promise Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I know you're a covenant-keeping God. You can't break your covenant because you remember how you made it. I I'm telling you, this, this, this is how you get your prayers answered. Moses brought up to God his reputation. He said, you remember when you made a covenant with Abraham? You told him to get an animal. I wish I had a Bible reader. And cut it in half. And lay both pieces on either side. And, and, and Abraham, don't you walk through it. I'm going to walk through it. I wish I had a Bible reader. And by walking through it, what I mean is, if I don't keep my promise, let what happened to this animal happen to me. You're a covenant keeping God. You can't break your covenant. Please don't do that. Then God said, all right. I had, I had every intention of killing every one of them. But you prayed. You interceded. I changed my mind. Don't, don't that make you want to run? That you can have such a relationship 
with God that you can talk to him and make him change his mind. Because when you bring up his reputation, when you bring up his history, he's got to honor his own reputation. Moses, get down there. Because your people have corrupted themselves. And I'm going to kill every one of them. Well, let me hurry to the close. The lawgiver becomes a mediator. And he begs God to give him another chance. You and I needed a mediator. But this time, he doesn't send Moses. He doesn't send Abraham. He doesn't send David. Yonder comes the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. He says, prepare me a body, and I will go down and be his mediator. And Jesus, y'all know him, don't you? The matchless Lamb of God. Jesus, the Son of God without sin. Jesus, the Son of Man with power. Jesus, I wish I had somebody to help me call that name. Adam's Redeemer. Abel's Vindicator. Abraham's Sacrifice. Noah's ark, Moses' bush on fire, Joshua's battle axe, Gideon's fleece, Samson's power, David's music, Solomon's wisdom, Jeremiah's balm in Gilead, Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of a wheel, Jesus, y'all know him, don't you? God's only son. Mary's baby boy, James and Jude's older brother, Matthew's king, Mark's suffering servant, Luke's great physician, John's word made flesh, Acts coming of the Holy Ghost, Jesus, y'all know him, don't you? A rock in a weary land, a shelter in a time of storm, a friend when you're friendless, Bread when you're hungry, water when you're thirsty. Y'all know him, don't you? He came down through 42 generations, born in Bethlehem, reared in Nazareth. He died, didn't he die? But brother, early Sunday morning, he arose, didn't he rise? To become our mediator why don't you grab somebody why don't you shake somebody's hand tell him I got somebody who's answering my prayers I got somebody who is my mediator I got somebody who hears me and answers my prayer if the Lord opened doors for you help me praise his name Shake somebody's hand. Tell them you don't know. Like I know. What the Lord. I know he's all right. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me. I am his own. And the joy. Anybody here got joy? If you got real joy and you're not ashamed to testify, why don't you hug somebody? Tell them this joy that I have, the world didn't give it. I know he's all right.
I'm, I'm through now. I, I got to quit now. Because somebody told me I, say I do my best preaching at 730. And, and I don't have nothing left at 11 o'clock. So I'm going I'm to quit now. I'm, I'm not through, but I'm going to quit now. I'm, I'm not finished, but I'm going I'm, I'm to cut it off right here. But I know what prayer can do. I've seen the lightning flash. I heard the thunder roll. I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard, I said I heard the voice of Jesus bidding me still to fight on. He promised. Do you know he promised? Why don't you shake somebody's hand? Tell them he promised. He promised. Don't cry. He promised. Don't kill yourself. He promised. Don't stop going to church. He promised. Don't lose hope. He promised. Don't get discouraged. He promised. 